People would say, like, what the heck? I'm blending with my wife right now. Like, if you could please excuse yourself from this, this would be great. I'm not allowed to talk to you. Like, so many people have asked me that question. This morning, I, I sat there and talked with this guy. I, Please don't, but you'll do it anyway. So, if I have words for you, count it blessed. <clears throat> this part right here, right? He snapped his pieces on pretzels, all busted up and blasted with bold cheddar cheese flavor. Delicious. Tremendous. That's Stupendous. What about my case? Yeah, you got a new case now. Because these are not pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it's like. Wait. Of paying rent, are you constantly moving from one apartment to another? Babe, do you like LGI these flowers? Offers a well, I did. God right. loves the world in this way. That he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hey, it's Dallas and the creator of The Chosen, and the scene you're about to see is the, scene, the most impactful and famous chapter in the Bible, John chapter 3, the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. Now, what you're about to see will not only be the gospel captured accurately, but you'll also see the historical context, the cultural context, and the personal human context that we added that was set up by the previous six episodes. So enjoy the scene as it is. But if you want to get the full impact as to why this scene was so powerful, be sure to watch the entire season one of The Chosen. Check this out. I don't know where to start. I have so many questions. Shall we sit first? Oh, yes. Of course. Now, I have that much power. Hold on, hold on. You're religious and you know your scripture. You do, right? Do you mind if I... <clears throat> I was thinking so many things about you guys. No. The coveted... Blogger. It's the things behind the scenes. I love it. I was thinking about my baby like I always do. Does she actually get it? My baby was telling me, I admire you, so I'm trying to be like you. I'm like, well, you have to learn a lot of things, babe. So this is a TV. And it's promoting my work and and this guy is pretending to be me okay. i have my own style just like you have your own style and i'm matching it up how it really went like what actually happened well it started with you couldn't stand me at all but I would never let you go. I would never stop loving you. I'd just be like, so you're upset about me loving you? Like, didn't we? And then everybody would melt. I'd be like, Lord. It was so amazing. But it, some, I can't say it ever went like this, but it was close to a conversation with me sometimes. But to sit down with me personally, I got rid of all of the um, ordinances of what righteousness was right in front of you. And then I would just, and do you know who you're talking to? People on their knees right in front of me. I'd be like, well, I can't put my beer here why is that? 
It was incentivized, Lord. Ah. Now, we're learning. Why can't I? Why wasn't it sanctified? Somebody else was supposed to do it for you, Lord. Well, where is that person? Well, if we're going to follow religious standards and the law, aren't I supposed to have a priesthood? Nicodemus. By your own law. Nicodemus, why aren't you my priesthood? And where are your followers that are supposed to have sanctified the very seat that you sat in by law? Or do you just ignore the ones that are not quite familiar or worse to say, Nicodemus? At your disposal. And it went like this. Dallas Big Ups. <clears throat> I love it. I've seen Christians attack it. I, I... The Eastern Slums. Hmm. Many wandering preachers have succeeded in gathering crowds with their rhetoric and fiery tone. I've heard a few of them over the years myself. So you know the tack. But I have never heard anyone tell a paralytic to get up and walk. Much less, it actually happened. So what is your conclusion? I believe you are not acting alone. No one can do these signs you do without having God in him. Only someone who has come from God. And how is that belief going over in the synagogue? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we are here at this hour. What else? What have you come here to show us? A kingdom. That is what our rulers are worried about. Not that kind. That one. A sort of kingdom that a person cannot see unless he is born again. <clears throat> My favorite thing? Get drunk as shit right in front of you. And be like, mm -hmm. well, I was thinking about nine billion things, but since you're here. And then turn that into you were the main attraction. The entire time. People fell in love with me, beloved. They're like, we can't wait to see him again. Because when he speaks, something happens. I'll just sit there like, do you like this beer? Like, oh, what? It's going to happen to me. Bring back six of them next time. I'm doing you a favor. People will be like, the Lord is here. He's right over there. People will start getting curious. I'm not hanging on to glory days. That's not me. Anybody ask me, I'll find fault in myself. I ask the Holy Spirit every single time. What fault do you find in me? Holy Spirit and me, we're like. Come on, Lord. No, I don't see anything in you. Well, I was working every single day, so you did. <laughs> like, this. love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, right? So, sometimes I don't even know the plan, but I walk it out. And that's what I want to teach my people. You know, I'm not happy about having 130 subscribers. I never thought I would get 130 subscribers. But... I was like, they're hearing the word of God when they need to hear it. So I was like, as much pain as it causes me, and it does.
But that's what ministry is, balloons. It cost me and my wife. It cost me my, my my wife. I can't do anything about it. The Holy Spirit keeps telling me, no, 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 it didn't. You, your wife knows you. So, <clears throat> do I miss my wife with all my heart? Why don't you miss yours? Everybody's been running away from their wives, their husbands, and then they come to me, and I'm, we could do that, but imagine, if you had two of you, why don't we work on that, beloved? Maybe you don't know what's going to happen beyond the scenes, but everybody comes to me, I'm never going back to this one, this one did this to me, and I, there was this person, you know, you call them the devil. I, hey, devil, could you come over here? Thank you. Now, the next time I tell you, well, I'm trying my hardest. No. So, oh, you don't know. I, that is pretty much what happens. Like, the devil is scared of me. Get up, Chucky. <laughs> to me, it was like everybody was calling me the devil. I was like, mm, okay. Well, one of us is. Mm, let's figure it out. Mm, I'm down. You need some alcohol? You need me this? Word of God? We'll figure this out. We'll, we'll find out which one of us is the devil, right? Because I know for a fact I'm not the devil. My name and my entire life tells me I'm not the devil. But since you said so, let, let's get it out in the open here. So I was... <laughs> well, once and for all, I, mean, I, I got called the devil back in the day. I got used to it. Hurt me a lot first. It really did. It used to hurt so bad that I, the Holy Spirit was like, you're going to have to toughen up. These people are evil. <clears throat> you know, come over here. Let me get you some ice cream. Well, they call.